Every so often, I'll get an email from somebody who, before they commit to working with me online, or even live maybe, but this is usually online because of the times that we're in, they'll email me and say, how can I know 100% for certain that you or PRI can help me? And when I get those emails, I'm not inclined to want to work with that person because I can see that they, their mind is tight. <laughs> their mind is tight as is their probably is their body. Uh, and I have learned over time that certain types of people, they do so amazingly well. Uh, when someone says, oh, I've, I'll ask them how familiar they are with PRI or, or what, what I do. And they'll say, oh, I've watched every video. They're already coming into it with their mind expanded. They're not restricted and tight in their mind. Their body might be, but their mind is expansive. They are seeing things, they are seeing connections. Because usually in my videos, they see themselves. They are feeling what I'm describing and it's very validating for them. So they're already coming into the situation with a very open mind and they believe it's gonna work because they, they can just feel it inside their body. And a lot of times they've tried some of the beginner techniques and they've already felt the difference. Other people approach it with disbelief, that they don't quite buy into it, which is fine. And I understand that because a lot of times they've spent money on things and you know they've seen all these different specialists who PhDs and doctorates and all these other titles. And here I am, I'm just a trainer. Uh, but of course, PRI is its own discipline and it's not like anything else. So all those letters after people's names are absolutely irrelevant to understanding what postural restoration is. Actually, that might be a hindrance. But you know, when they come into it with such a tight, narrow view, and they are so dependent upon a, they are so very dependent upon certainty, certainty they want to be certain that this is going to work for them. The problem is this, there are no guarantees in life and uncertainty is the law. That's the law of the universe. And this is what, interestingly enough, Albert Einstein could not accept. He understood quantum mechanics, but he could, and he believed in it but he still believed he had to, he, his mind still needed to cling to some type of certainty, even behind quantum mechanics, because quantum mechanics, if I'm not mistaking this, is saying that uncertainty is the basis of the universe and human life. And it so is, again, the Buddhists have been saying this for 2000 years. There is no, you do not know what's gonna happen tomorrow in December. Or in November, did you think coronavirus was gonna happen and completely upend life? No, we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, much less five minutes from now. Yet our mind needs that certainty. An interesting parallel, the body needs that certainty. The brain needs that certainty that the ground is gonna be there on your next step so that you don't fall. PRI is really giving your brain, your your uh, brainstem, your autonomic nervous system, certainty that the ground is going to be there by reintroducing you to the ground with proper muscle action. So we can give your brainstem the earliest parts of your existence, of human existence, not your conscious thoughts, which are a newer, a newer uh, evolution. We can give the brainstem what it wants, which is certainty that the ground is going to be there on your next step and you're not going to fall down. So that back pain goes away. That piriformis syndrome <clears throat> goes away. Uh, that knee pain goes away because your brain is now saying, hey, that left side is safe to go to. And now here, all I have to do is stabilize and breathe, feel the muscles, experience this left stance position. Unfortunately, you can't do that for your mind. Your mind craves it. It wants certainty. You want to know what's happening. And that's the second noble truth of Buddhism. And this is the second noble truth of PRI, I would suppose, is that 
there are no guaranteed outcomes. I work off of patterns. I know that everything I do with you is beneficial because I know you have a right diaphragm that's bigger and a dominant right side. So everything that we do in PRI or everything I do with somebody, I rest easy at night, even if I can't figure out all their issues. If, 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 I, if I can't resolve every pain that they have, I know what I'm doing with them is something their body needs anyway. I know their brainstem, their, their brain is craving that left he, that sense of a left heel, that sense of the ground on the left side, that left peripheral awareness, that was left of that scent, that internal visceral sense of left abdominals, so that your brain knows where you are and knows how to use the ground on the left and the right. I know your brain loves it, whether you realize it or not, because you're probably only consciously thinking about, oh, you know, my neck is still a little tense. But all this stuff, you're making these neural connections that you need anyway. But again, on the other side of the equation, your mind, if you're still craving certainty in your life, if you're holding on to something too tightly that cannot be held on to, that is another source of suffering that I don't have a lot of control of when I work with people. And that second noble truth is that there is no certainty. And if you crave or desire certainty, you will suffer. So the second noble truth of Buddhism is that the reason that first life is difficult, that was the video, maybe two videos ago, life is just difficult the way that's because it's how life is. Secondly, you suffer because of craving, because of desire. There's nothing wrong with craving or desire. Do I want certainty? Yeah. Do I need certainty? No. And that's, and that's how it works. Once you can let go of your desire or your craving for whatever it is, money, food, friendships from some particular person, you know, if money comes, great. If it doesn't, I'm good. Uh, if I get this job, awesome. If I don't, it's okay, I'll find something else. When you can adopt that attitude, you're suffering and your tension will drop. And I don't have control over that. I don't have control over what you go home to every day. So when I'm working with somebody, I know I can very much deal with the physical aspects of this. I don't have quite so much control over the emotional, psychological, spiritual tightness of someone's mind, how tight their mind is. How, you know, it's funny, you can, if, you, if you've ever, you know, I went to massage school because I had to just for legal reasons, but not really because I, I don't really give a massage, but you can feel the difference in people's bodies. You know, you can see their personalities and then you can also feel their bodies. And people who are just seem so laid back, they're, they're good with everything. <laughs> their, their bodies are nice and relaxed. People who come in with, you know, tension in their, in their face, uh, People who are very rigid with rules and A leads to B and they're very, you know, again, I would generally talk about people who watch too much political TV. They're most likely going to not have a very relaxed body. They're rigid and they get, they, they can't react. They're, they're rigid and not stable. They can't react to changing circumstances. So it's just, you know, they feed that, they feed it, they feed it, they feed it. They give themselves some sort of, um, pleasure in life by getting angry about the other side or they define themselves by who they're not like I'm not those damn liberals or those arch conservatives you know I'm me and I'm better so they make themselves you know they, they give themselves a sense of person a sense of self by comparing themselves to other people who they think are wrong and you'll find that in their bodies you can feel these things so I just just to draw a parallel and I love this book and I've mentioned it before all right, Vegas Nerve. And the author, now, I'm gonna read it to you first. When he's talking about Vegas dysfunction, he has found that when he would think of disturbing thought, C1, C2, and C3, so the, at, the atlas, the axis, and C3, which are your top three verte cervical vertebrae, move out of position just by a thought, just by a thought. Now, you know, Pierre, and let me just see if there's anything else I want to talk about. Um, they, could, they knew that because they would palpate it. He would think a thought, and his students could feel the, the atlas change its position. And it, he said it probably... So, uh, 
he had to stay, he had to, in order to do this, he had to change a state of social engagement. He had to become more withdrawn and give himself a disturbing thought. And that become, that, then you become less socially engaged in a good way. And so he said, the, the, cha the class could see my change in breathing. It could see the loss of color in my face. Uh, and interestingly, it took more time to get back into place than it took to get out of place. So if someone I'm working with, and you know, if you've done PRI long enough, you know it's all about this neck and this cranium. I can do a lot of things to help get this right TMCC pattern to resolve. I can do it physically. But if you keep going back to a job that you hate, spouse that you hate, kids that are driving you crazy, or an abusive relationship, I don't know, there could be a million things. He's basically saying that he observes that these three vertebrae get out of position. He's, I think he's describing the right TMCC pattern. So it's not purely physical. Uh, our emotional and mental and psychological states will greatly drive position of your neck. We are emotionally, we are feeling driven organisms. This is not muscles and bones. We are feeling driven organisms. Feelings drive us, they maintain homeostasis, they drive you forward when you need to be driven forward, they tell you to relax when you need to relax. This is autonomically driven. So if I can do everything I can do to help people get this neck to relax through physical mechanisms, and we can also talk about anything they wanna talk about, but if they go home or they're in, an, in, a, in a situation that causes a great amounts of tension and stress, this neck will go back again and I can't repeatedly. And that's the other equation of all this that I don't have as much control over. So something that I need from people to be able to work with them effectively, they might need a psychologist. They might need, they might need help from a therapist, not just help from you know, the physical body aspect of it. So uh, you know, people who need a certain outcome, desire a certain outcome, if they're not getting it, they're gonna put themselves into a stressful situation and more likely turn on their neck again. And that's just an interesting uh, correlation that someone who does not know PRI wrote a book, and in the book, he's talking about the vagus nerve, and he's talking about how that neck will rotate out of position when, just by thinking a disturbing thought. So there are some things that I can really influence, but there's other parts that I can't influence. So on my end, I have to give up the thought that I can help everybody. I know I can help them to one degree or another because they need it no matter what, because they're human and they have a dominant right side and a less dominant left side. But I'm not gonna be able to help every single person perfectly because of these unforeseen, the unknowables that I don't know, because people don't tell you everything. Uh, there's things that are out of my control. So I've had to learn as someone who likes to help that I can't help everybody. So I've had to let go of the expectation. I've had to let go of the certainty because it doesn't exist that I can help every single person. And again, all of life is about letting go as is PRI because you gotta let go of a pattern, a physical pattern, which is very neurologically uh, consciously driven. And you have to let go of certain patterns of thinking for this neck to fully relax because once the neck goes back, it's going to pull you back into extension and you'll lose ground on that left side again.